This broadcast is the property of Codependence Anonymous. Reproduction without written permission from Codependence Anonymous is not permitted. Service Concepts Consistent service concepts in all levels of CODA service. And I do have a message from someone who has been instrumental in bringing this topic to our attention. And they, and she will be here shortly. Or in a little while. So, as we, um, let's see, what would I like to share with you? How many people, uh, let me ask this, how many people have read any of the material from the fellowship from the Fellowship Service Manual, FSM, on the topic of service. The Twelve Service Concepts and there's a long form Ah, hands up. Um, Joni and Kathy, can I ask you to say what you have read about, please? Let me um, yes, uh, I need to um, ask you to unmute and Kathy and Joni, would you um, like to go ahead? Okay. Hi, uh, this is Kathy. And um, hi, when Kathy. I, hi, hi. Um, when I decided to attend today, I briefly went to coda.org and read about the service concepts. So it was my first time reading them quickly. So that's about all the knowledge I have. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joni? Oh, uh, yeah. The reading the service concepts is part of the um, process my sponsor had me go through in, in working the steps. We did that before I ever started the steps, actually. So just to get the service concepts under my belt. <laughs> so as far as reiterating all of them i i printed out the ser the service manual i have a binder that i keep i'm trying to find it <laughs> so i haven't read it lately i mean i mean i browsed through it but i couldn't reiterate all the service concepts right i i, I think that's unusual that you 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 were encouraged to become familiar with the service concepts before even working the steps. That, that seems unusual to me. I, I did not encounter the service concepts until I started going to the CODA um, service um, yeah. conference. Yeah, um, I read through the service manual before I started step one. Or I read through it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so we, we read through the we read through the pamphlets and we read through the service manual just to get an idea of what Codependence Anonymous was about, so that I would know um, how the structure of it. It may not have made a lot of sense to me at the time, but the idea was to implant the concepts in my brain so that as I encountered them when I went along, they would start to make more sense, and I would know where to go. Um, as I worked my recovery, I would know where they were in the service manual, which is why I have a printed copy and I make sure I have a current copy printed and I have my binder open right now. So. Uh -huh. And, and where, how are you able to find that? Uh, it's at coda.org, the FSM. In the FSM? Yeah. Right. And, uh. 
Have you ever? And, it, it's in part three, the guidelines of intermediate service. You know, it's, yes. And um, so I had posited the question. Um, welcome, Marilee. I had just posited the question of asking how many people had read anything on the service concepts or were familiar with the service concepts. So uh, perhaps you might like to jump in on that point. Oh, let me ask you to unmute. Actually, I think I'm going to make it easier for people to unmute themselves. Yes, there we go. That would be better. Hi, Marilee. Welcome. Hi, thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I've looked over the service concepts a number of times, starting with when I um, went to my first voting entity meeting <laughs> of NorCal and heard them for the first time. And let's see, three are read at each of the four quarterly meetings. And then we moved on to the next thing. And I was like, wait, what What was that? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I want to say I've never really gotten much more clarity on what they are. That um, I haven't heard a workshop on them. And... Um, I know that there's an alive and strong um, literature that was submitted, I believe, from Canada that um, I understand from the literature committee they are working on now um, to present at the uh, 2024 CSC um, because mm, I've looked at that um, document and it's not as general I guess I want to say as what I think could be helpful um, to the fellowship as a whole and I'm sure the literature committee is going to make it more appropriate um, and that that could definitely be a help I don't know what they're going to do with it you know you won't know till it comes out right um, but it seems to me if we base ourselves on service, that the service concepts, which I understand were written for world-level service, shouldn't be <laughs> only available or written for and focused on world-level service. That we do service, hopefully, starting at our meeting level. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> where's our guidance and direction? Like... It's kind of like, mm, you know, you, you learn something the first time, and if you learn it wrong, well, that's kind of your go-to um, for a long time. And to unlearn something is much, and, and learn it the right way is much harder than just learning it the right way to start with. Mm. So mm. it just feels to me like there's, opportunity here for CODA to improve itself um, with the service concepts being the focus in this particular situation. I think, yeah, yeah I think I'll pass with that. <laughs> Any thanks comments? <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, I, I was um, taught in CODA that service is service it that it begins by coming to a meeting um and then maybe setting up chairs bringing cookies or cake making tea or and coffee um passing out literature printing literature the, the free literature to bring to meetings for distribution all of that is service and that there, there is no hierarchy in CODA so that um, if there is no hierarchy in CODA, then the chairman of the 
board or the core board is their service is not any different from the person who sets up chairs in a meeting. Service is service. That's what I was taught. But beyond that, I had not. Oh, let me see. My name is David. I'm codependent. Along with James K. and myself, we host the Fellowship Forum. And the Fellowship Forum is an opportunity to share our experience, strength, and hope, not just about personal recovery, but also about the CODA program. Um, and I had not encountered, I didn't even know there was a document called Service Concepts until I went to the CODA Service Conference in 2019. I had been in CODA a number of years. Yes, Kathy, welcome. You can unmute yourself. I didn't mean, I didn't want to interrupt you. I was just going to make a comment when you finish. So that's why I raised my hand. I'm, I, I'm yeah, the, that's, yeah. The, the okay. Fact that I did not encounter, I'm just saying that uh, my knowledge of the service concepts and any information about them didn't, was, was, uh, I had no awareness of it until uh, I'd been in CODA many years. So I was surprised when someone said that they uh, read the service concepts before they began the steps. That I think that's very interesting. So, uh, yes, Kathy. So um, I uh, feel I can r- relate to the things that are being said because um, I agree. I agree, like setting up the chairs, you know, no hierarchy. But um, one of the reasons I came today was to figure out some of the concerns about service or people volunteering for service. And then if we have concerns about that, where do we go? although it always seems like group conscience is the way to go within the meeting to figure out things are going on at the meeting. And I know I'm being general, but that's why I'm here today because I'm interested in my meeting and things that are going on there and service versus non-service or people signing up for service and then we don't see them again in any way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These are all such important issues. Uh, as was said uh, earlier, that this is a service-oriented fellowship. And we do seem to, there does seem to be a paucity of information about service and how to, uh, what is it and how to do it in the fellowship. So um, hopefully this uh, this uh, meeting, this uh, forum today will uh, add to the uh, knowledge about uh, service, how, how, what is expected of us, what, why are we here, what kind of service are we doing in this fellowship. And I'm wondering how many people here, like myself, had never read or have yet to have read any information about service in the in coda so um if you've not read the service concepts at all and, um a show of hands would be nice and if you have read it what did you think of it how did it, did was it um a um refreshing experience did it did, I know when I read the service concepts, I was surprised. I learned things I didn't know were ex- that I was expected to be able to do when I was doing service. So uh, well, if you've read the service concepts, what's your experience of what they have to say about service in the fellowship? Anyone want to? Yes, James. Welcome. Thank you, David. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, 
2019, I was there with you, and that was the first time I heard the service concepts. But when, where it started for me was the 12th step, as having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. I tried to carry these this, this message to other codependents who still suffer. And my group that I'm in, is it's really a healthy group. And I went ahead and I was the literature person and I, I was, uh, I, I did every job in the, in the meeting and I wound up being the treasurer. And during that time, and that was when it got to be like 2019 and COVID came around and we were all running around looking for hand sanitizers. And then we figured, found out the church was closed and we had to go to zoom. So I was the treasurer at that time. So I had to get the zoom account and I wasn't, I wasn't very good with computers. But my journey in service led me into getting the Zoom account, and then it led me to be the host. And uh, it was such a, an amazing journey. And and that's when I went to the 2019 service, con, uh, service con, conference, and I heard the service concepts. And they meant, they meant a lot to me. In fact, I went up to the front of the room and read them. And I was in such a state at that time in my life that, I, I was worried when I w- walked up there that I was going to start crying <laughs> because I was so emotional because Coda was so much a part of my life. I I was alone at the time. I lost my family for a while and they were my family. They turned out to be my family, but the, the, my journey in service, I wound up, um, I, I roomed with three wonderful people at three different events and and they led me into three different committees to do service. So the service uh, filled an empty spot in my life at, at exactly the time that I needed it. And uh, there's a lot more I could say about my recovery, but in my in terms of service, uh, it filled that void in my life that I needed to be filled right at the very time I needed it filled, and and it uh, changed my life. So with that, I'll pass, and I'll reserve time for another comment, and I'll pass. Thank you, James. And Dan, welcome, Dan. Good afternoon. Um, I don't know where to begin. Um, I had a hand in writing the um, service concept booklet uh, a few years ago and uh was very happy to have it uh see endorsed by coda i believe it was in 2021 nonetheless it's uh i'm anxious for core to be able to print it out anyways uh i i i'd like to give some history behind the how the booklet came about that's great, Dan. Are you referring to the alive, um, the service yeah, concepts alive, and, alive strong. and strong? Yes, sir. Great. I'm going to put a link to that in the chat for everyone. So if they're not familiar with it, uh, they can uh, get to it later on. Please continue. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to inform the others that are present um about what the service concepts meant for myself which is basically what was written in the booklet but was uh it was definitely i was definitely inspired to to write it as uh i believe yourself mentioned just as i came on i i, I came on about 10 minutes ago um I was one of those people who wanted to know more about the concepts and my sponsor had told me, well, he, he gave me the name of somebody to contact and, uh, it, it was discussed. Uh, <laughs> how would I put it? It was a couple of the concepts were discussed, but I was totally at a loss as to what they meant. And now that the booklet has been, uh, it was produced. It was passed here at uh, in in Canada back in 2019, I believe. How time flies. Anyways, um, 
a group of us at uh, Coda Canada got together to make some edits to the booklet, uh, the Alive and Strong booklet. And there we go. May I ask, is that out? Uh, is, is this the final copy that Cora has produced? I believe so. I've put a link to that. The uh, No. The... Sorry. No. Oh. The, no. Literature Committee is working on it now, and it will be presented at the 2024 conference as the related material to a motion. They're in the middle of making adjustments. Oh, they're, they're going to be making adjustments to this particular, the 12 service concepts, alive and strong documents? Yes, yes uh -huh. that's right. They're, they're not writing a fresh new document. They are working on this. This version is available digitally or uh, as a PDF from um, World Coda, and the link to it is in the chat. Yeah. So this is the document that <laughs> Literature Committee is editing now for presentation yes. in Ottawa. Yes. Well, bringing it back to Canada, how appropriate. <laughs> uh, is it Merrily, your name? Yes, yes, that's right. Hey, I'm just curious because the, well, the booklet that was first passed up here uh, at, in Canada was endorsed by the uh, CSC back in, I believe it was 2021. So I'm wondering uh, and it was, how would I put it? It was edited by the um, Code of Literature Committee at the time, the year before. It so was initially, it, it was initially presented as a motion in 2020, and then kept on the back burner, if you wish, for that one year, and then was, uh, as I believe, was endorsed at the 2021 service conference. So I, yeah. I don't know what's happening now. Maybe you can fill me in here and the rest of us. Well, um, I know someone on the literature committee and their text to me says, CLC, which is the Coder Literature Committee, yeah. is fully editing this piece right now, dot, dot, dot. It's coming to CSC 2024, the CLC re version. So what happened to the 2021 motion that it's, was approved? It's on there. It's it's approved. So that's um, like the 30 questions and the 40 questions from Northern California. Okay. The voting entity pre presents something, and then it has a year for comment before it gets um, voted on a second time. And so that was the process that you went through also from Canada um, to get this to be available to the code of membership. So I would say, Dan, since you were an original author of it, I'm surprised that um, you're not aware that the literature committee is um, editing it. And I would invite you to contact the literature committee. <laughs> the ironic part, if you can believe this, I was on the literature committee uh, for about a year in regards to another piece of literature and they discussed upcoming projects they were working on. Uh, I think the last time I attended a meeting, give or take six months ago, and no mention was ever made of looking at the service concepts. But if if that's what they decided to do, then that to me, that's part of the part of the process that it needs to go through, and that's fine. Uh, I'm just happy that the concepts be made. I'm going to say public or be made uh, available to the to the fellowship. The what what if I can continue with what I discovered as I was writing this is that the concepts uh, were they were initially presented to me as applicable to service, which I agree is on the surface, the service concepts do that. What I discovered as I was writing, and this is where higher power came in, 
is that I could see a connection between service and recovery and relationships that come into play in each of the service concepts. So in that booklet that was initially written, that is uh, mentioned is made of that, along with um, a blurb or a description of what I thought how the concepts applied to me and uh, a number of questions to permit members of the fellowship to discuss uh, between sponsor sponsee or discuss uh, at any Coda group anywhere on the planet, like whatever would happen with it, that was fine. You know, it, it was that I would believe was the initial purpose of the booklet, because as it was mentioned, there was nothing, absolutely nothing that existed that explained the concepts and what they meant, except for the list itself. And I, I could not wrap my head around that. Now we're talking about 2016, 17. And that's when I decided I'm just going to sit down on my computer and write this, what I think it means. And it just started as a few sentences and a paragraph for each concept. And then it grew and it evolved. And then that's when I presented it to Coda Canada and the people that helped edit the document and have it approved at Coda Canada. So the the concepts, as I saw it, I, so I, I don't know. Okay, I'm looking at the introductory message. Can you scroll? Uh, sure. Where would you, please? you want me to scroll down a little bit? Yeah, I, I recognize... Oh, yeah. Awesome stuff. Keep going, please. Okay. This is just, I, I want to see, keep going. Service concept one. There's the concept itself in italics. Okay, keep going to page five. Want to see if they left the questions in there. Yes, they did. Oh, goodness. There they are. Wonderful. So, Dan... Yes, this, what we're looking at is what Coda Canada presented. There's okay. not any changes to it. This is exactly what CSC approved in 2021. And if you look at the bottom of each page, it says that. Okay. Yeah. I'm what beginning to understand literature's what committee is doing is editing it to be a CS, CLC, a literature committee um, offering. Okay. of this it will be uh, my understanding the separate document something like we have the um recovery patterns that we talked about last month yeah okay that people have been using for a number of years and then the new ones that were approved this year which is an i version and a we version yes and so yeah it's like that it's not um it's a it's a new revised you Excellent. It, yeah. It, it's yeah. I, I'm just glad that it, it 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 keeps evolving. I would say, and that is important. The more people that can get their hands on it, like the CLC, and make the necessary changes or edits or whatever to make it um, eventually, like you say, if it is approved next year in Ottawa, uh, that, that would just be wonderful. Well, that would be a, being, being from Canada to have it approved at our nation's capital would be mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> quite the thing. Mm -hmm. Happy to hear that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know what to do besides just speaking here from the top of my head. I don't know if anybody would have questions pertaining to the concepts themselves. I, I don't know if that's appropriate right now, but I'm just putting it out there. Right. Well, I'd like to say one thing. I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned the connection between service and recovery. For years, the, the, the level of service, I, uh, not the level, but the kind of service I engaged in was, is, is like I said earlier, setting up chairs and bringing 
cake and making coffee and maybe uh, printing up literature to bring to a meeting for distribution. Beyond that, I was terrified to do any service uh, because I one thing I felt was that I wouldn't get it right. I felt I had to do it perfectly. I had a very codependent attitude about service, and it took a long time for people to mentor me and, and encourage me to do service in other areas. Uh, one thing I found out when I started to do service, I started doing service because I felt I should, um, as the 12th step, it encourages me to bring, to give back to this fellowship that had done so much, that I felt had done so much in my life uh, towards um, giving me a much better outlook and uh, on life. And what I discovered in doing f- service was that it became like rocket fuel to my recovery. I discovered areas of recovery in myself that I had no idea existed until I began doing service. So service has become a really important part of my recovery, and I'm very g- grateful for that aspect of, of this program. But And so I'm really glad that you mentioned the, the strong connection between service and recovery. And the other thing that um, hopefully that it's what the once this is presented and if endorsed will ultimately become a printed document that is available for purchase that can be um, put out at meetings for people to get their hands on, not just something they have to search for and download at the website. So those are the things that I, 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 I'm very happy to hear about. And I'm so glad that you came to the meeting. I had no idea you would be here, that you came here and are talking about uh, this document that I, I didn't even know where it had come from, much <laughs> less, the, 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 uh, even less than I knew about the service concepts, I had no idea what the origin of this document is. So thank you for coming here and sh- and shedding some light on this subject today. Well, I, I, I want to give thanks. There's a, a colleague of mine that I work with in service uh, at Coda Canada and uh, within a sponsor sponsee or service sponsor service sponsee relationship. Um, I, I see uh, her name there, and uh, she was a. Well, she just reminded me that I was late for this Zoom meeting, so I'm very grateful. I won't mention her name. Uh, for anonymity reasons, but uh, yeah. So what you've shared um, is the living proof that that connection between recovery and service comes through between the lines and the words of these concepts. We don't see the word recovery in the concepts. We don't see the word relationships, but by serving, being in service, being a trusted servant. Uh, My personal belief is I'm serving my higher power first. I, I am serving myself by being in recovery. I'm serving my group by doing what I do, like you expressed yourself. Then I take all this that I learn in CODA, in my group, in my service, and I bring it home. I bring it to work. I bring it wherever I may be. And I can practice the principles in those concepts in the very relationships I develop. I don't talk about the booklet with these people. It's just something... Like we say, it's it's attraction rather than promotion. And that is the message of this booklet and anything else that, you know, CODA has produced is how we were or 
I'll speak for myself, how I was affected, influenced, and and inspired to to do what I do in service and then apply it in my relationships. And this is what CODA is about. And this booklet, uh, one, the one thing I haven't mentioned is because there was nothing at the time available on the concepts, I wanted to fill that huge void. I wanted to do so, but I had no idea myself even what I wrote and what you you had up on the screen is this even correct? And and it just took off from there. That's mm. why I presented it to Dakota Canada. I needed confirmation. Does this make any sense? Mm. And the feedback I got and what I've heard so far, it seems to. If the CLC is looking at it and having made more edits and revisions that there's something there that I got right and uh I'm not you know I'm I'm questioning higher power here you know like who am I to question higher power but um after all this time to see the booklet uh make its way again to the service conference and then be available like you said if it can be made available for sale to all the members of the fellowship, they will understand each of the concepts because like you showed uh, the first concept, for example, that explanation, the one page of explanation, a bit like what the workbook does with the steps and traditions. Mm -hmm. and, and that is where I got the inspiration to add the questions. Mm. Well, if they did it in the workbook for the steps and traditions, why not do this with the service concepts? Okay, well, here we go. And then the next thing you knew, there were a bunch of questions. And again, having it uh, read by the members of, of Code of Canada and approved, blah, blah, blah. It made its way to the CSC and... 2021 and now we're in 2023 late 2023 and it's inching its way towards this you know final approval um it will now constitute the concepts have a voice the concepts have a voice within the booklet to explain to all the members of the fellowship how they apply to each and every one of us. Mm. We don't have to be the GSR. We don't have to have been in CODA for X number of years. We could be a newcomer, although it would be a little bit more difficult for them to maybe understand. But I think it is written in simple terms that anyone could understand. And if it is studied by a group or a, a, a group separately from um, their meeting uh, as a service concept study in the same way we do step studies and tradition studies mm -hmm. and then answer those questions. Well, I think oh, that... God, it's unbelievable. The doors that that, that that opens for people to see how the concepts apply to service, they apply to recovery, and they apply to our relationships. And that is what CODA is about. Mm -hmm. And I hope that everyone can understand that. Anyways, I, I'm going to stop there because I could go on forever here. Well, I, I really appreciate that. I, I think you make some very good points that, and... I like the questions because when I read material, um, I, I I get one aspect of the experience. The questions encourage me to think about it, how it applies in my life. What does it mean to me to hear this information? So I like the fact that you've added questions 
to the service concepts. I'm going to put a link in the chat to the uh, service con list of the service concepts themselves that people can uh, review if they want. And hopefully the pe that people in this meeting will um, be encouraged to download the service concepts and read the service concepts again or if for the first time and be more aware of them. I think that, that you make a telling point that having the service concepts become as uh, available and familiar as the steps, traditions, and promises is a good thing. And uh, that is something I think that the book that you produced and is now being reviewed by the Literature Committee so that it um, continues to evolve and, and um, grow in the uh, availability of this uh, fellowship is a good thing. And so I thank you for your efforts. And I would add that you're not late. You're right on time for you, Dan, not to worry. <laughs> Glad you came here today. And, and contributed to this conversation. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to say or add to this conversation or to Dan? This is our forum. We get to talk about ideas and, and, and um, material in the program, not just our own experience, strength, and hope. So um, just unmute yourself. Yes, Kathy. Welcome. Hi. Uh, yeah. And Dan, I don't even know where to begin other than a big thank you. So thank you. Um, but it seems to me that without service and without uh, guidelines or literature for the service, the meetings could go away or an individual meeting if you don't have the service concepts there and people to um, perform or, you know, be the trusted servant and do those things. But I wanted to say also, seeing service as part of my recovery as someone coming from, as always the person to volunteer for everything and, and other groups and the person always in charge and, um, becoming uh fulfilling a service role at my meeting and expecting that I'm going to do that probably for years which I then realize that there's certain times I mean performing service at my local meeting is also helping me directly I'm not an expert I'm equal with everyone in the meeting and that Maybe I'm doing chairs or I'm a key holder, but no one of those is more important. And there's not a person in charge. And so those are concepts that were foreign to me before I joined CODA. So just that whole thing of service and knowing that I don't have to do it all. I don't, nor can I volunteer for everything again, just reinforces um, all the service concepts for me and reinforces my journey and um, gives me another way to become healthy. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the thought occurs to me now, as it says in step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to other codependents and to practice these principles in all our affairs. It gives us an instruction to do service by carrying the message in a way that is attractive, not promotive, but it doesn't give us until I read the service concepts, it doesn't give me any guidance in how to do step 12. Yes, Marilyn, I see your hand up, please. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Um, so I um, am looking at the service concepts 
And at the very top, it says that they were created in 2010. So that's only 13 years ago. And what did CODA do before these service concepts were in existence? Who created them in 2010? What group? What was the purpose? Because um, when I came in to CODA, which is just about that time, um, you know, I was like, "What? what is this? <laughs> and I was told, in my recollection, is that it was created for world service level positions for guidance for people doing board. You know, I look at number four of the service concepts and um, it talks about those who volunteer to do service work for CODA by serving on committees, boards, or corporations. And then I'm looking at the live and well, and you start off with um, the second sentence is, the list may not be complete. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, I think, really speaks to my question of um, the, the Alive and Well was created by Dan as an individual trying to work his program. And the concepts themselves, from my knowledge, were created at world level for them. And hence the, you know, <laughs> the, the comment <laughs> in, in the pamphlet. And so I'm trying to wrap my head around, like, what was the intention of the document in 2010? And I think I understand much better now the intent of the pamphlet, um, which I would love to see once it gets edited and approved again, that when the next version of the 12 by 12 comes out, it comes out as a 12 by 12 by 12. <laughs> and these are just in the green book, the green right. book. That um, would be so lovely. You know, Marilyn, I believe the service concepts were created about the time they began having the uh, CODA service conference. It didn't begin as what we know it today, the uh, CSC um, evolved from some early conferences. And perhaps that's where these service concepts were first considered. But I think that the question that you just uh, uh, pondered, it would be an excellent question for uh, 2024 when this motion is introduced. Where did they come from? Who wrote the first service concepts? Why did they write them? What was their intent? And uh, how did we how did we get here? This this didn't just land um, in in the fellowship from out of space. This was somebody put some people group of people or someone put some thought into this. Uh, I, I'm impressed by the by the language of the service concepts and the message it conveys. But I I I, I like your question. Where did they come from? How did they arrive? How did we get here? There's very little information on on um, the history of this uh, of the service concepts, and also your other question. Uh, but I see Dan's hand up. Welcome, Dan. Yes. Well, I have one more piece of the question. Yes. And that is, Dan, is this um, that you did for yourself? Um, and then sh so lovingly shared um, with the rest of us. Is that the intention to be used for a person as an individual working their program? Or is it intended to be guidance for people doing service at all the levels of CODA? Like what is what was your intention? How was it written? Thank Simply you. put. I would say all of the above. 
uh, it was presented to me when I began my recovery. And of course, like most others worked on the steps and the, the traditions. And um, when I asked my sponsor, like, okay, I, I, I see the 12 service concepts online and the very questions that were asked earlier, where do the concepts come from? And in all my research, asking people that were working at Coda International, I wasn't getting any specific answers. So like most of us are wondering, they had to have come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Who, who or what and where and why, like the five W questions we may ask ourselves, I had no idea. And um, I, 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 I love writing and that uh, love of writing, which is a means for me to work on my recovery and my service, because I was getting, I was working at our national voting entity, Coda Canada. When this first came up in my mind, well, let's write, let's put something down on paper here. So that's when the computer came out and the, what you've seen is basically what I was inspired to write because in, in, in reading the concepts as it was shown on the coda.org website, uh, and, and what I was told by my sponsor initially, or well, this is for people in service, like the WSO that was mentioned at one point. Okay, well, that's cool. And I kept reading them over and over. And I guess I began to see, as I was saying earlier, between the words and the lines and the different concepts, the 12 concepts, there's more to this than what maybe was the intent initially. I can't speak for what the initial intent was. I wasn't there. I wasn't even in CODA. Well, just about 2010. Anyways, so zip ahead, uh, whatever, 2017, when I sat down and what I gathered from the concepts as, as again, I repeat, I was inspired to write is that this is not only meant for the, in our inverted uh, pyramid representing our service structure. It's not just meant for those at the bottom. Maybe it was, I, I don't know. I was just guessing. Well, reading the concepts over and over made me realize they apply to the people at the top of that pyramid, which is where the coda groups are situated and everybody in between. So when you ask Marilee, it does apply to all levels of the service structure. It applies to all members of the fellowship even those that may begin and aren't in service other than maybe helping to set up the tables and they haven't reached that point yet in their growth. But this booklet will obviously help if, if that is something they decide to, to buy or to get their hands on, then that's wonderful. Now, what happens from there on, who knows? But there is no longer a void. There is now something on paper regarding the concepts besides the actual initial original list of 12 concepts. Because when I read them, it took me the longest time to figure out what do they mean, especially near the end where they speak of the of the corporation and the bylaws. Like that was going way over my head. 
I understood the words, but what does this have to do with CODA, you know? And all of a sudden, the light, the light bulbs started to come on in my head and in my heart, and boom, the booklet appeared, and it's it's continuing to evolve from what I'm learning today. So it's meant for everybody. That's a very good place for us to stop today. Dan, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank everyone for being here and uh, sharing in this fellowship form on service concepts. And um, next month, the fellowship form will meet on the 30th of December, the last Saturday of the month, at 12 noon Pacific time, 1 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Atlantic. And the topic is yet to be determined. Look for the announcement. I did promise to put some links in the chat that I haven't done yet. Let me quickly do that uh, for where you can listen to this recording when it is posted. And past recordings are available. So here is a lot of information about the fellowship form. Sorry, I didn't post it earlier. We'll wrap up today's meeting and stick around, if you would like, to continue in fellowship. Um, We'll close today's meeting with the CODA closing prayer. which I'll share on the screen. Go to closing prayer. We thank our higher power for all that we have received from this meeting. As we close, may we take with us the wisdom, love, acceptance, and hope of recovery. And with that, just give me a minute to turn off the recording. And if you would like to, please stick around for fellowship.